All right, guys, so I'm going to go through a few things here, try to keep up. Um, I'm going to go a little bit fast on some parts, but you can always rewind it and watch what I'm doing. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to set up your railgun. From there, we'll talk about the arm and the fractal node. I think that's about it overall. Um, what you could do also for the antenna is do a bend deformer and have a controller with an SDK in it. And the bend deformer allows you to have a low bound and a high bound on your particular antenna. I'm not sure I went over it in the previous video, but um, it's pretty simple to use. And all you need to do is just make an SDK for it and then put that bind deformer, put that bend deformer underneath your appropriate hierarchy. So moves accordingly. So real quick, let's talk about the railgun. Railgun's super simple. I don't think I did the railgun before, but I can go over it here. Um, so we have our base here, and then we have this guy here. So we're going to treat this guy just like the spine. And what we can do, let's go to side view. I'm going to go in here, and uh, let's go and do the animation. Go to skeleton to go with the animation. And we're going to go and put the bone here as a base. And then here for the rigging, and then here for the parenting. Now this base right here, that can be um, parented underneath um, the spine, so when it rotates, it rotates with the spine. Do not parent it underneath the shoulder, because when the shoulder rotates, the whole thing will rotate, which will be awkward for everybody. Let me hit the W key, move that back. So the only thing I'm going to smooth bind, <coughs> excuse me, is this guy right here. I'm going to make sure my bone's between these two edge places, or it might be a little weird and awkward how it moves. So I'm going to go and grab my bone root and then shift select this guy and then I'm going to skin him, smooth bind. Now not all the time do you have to use rigid bind, in a lot of cases you can use smooth bind as long as you place it in the right spot, which we went over in class um, earlier this uh, last week, hit smooth bind. So now when I bend this guy, it should move pretty nicely, let's get him by himself. And there you go, actually pretty cool. So that was like a little accordion effect going on, which is kind of nice. So you can paint out the weights on the base and make it so that they're related maybe to the root, which doesn't move and just simply rotates. So with that guy in mind, with that guy set up, we grab the rest of this guy. Let's go and sh uh, hide our um, joints here. I did have one already set up. Unfortunately, um, when I downloaded it, the one I gave you guys, when I downloaded it, it got completely corrupted. So what I'm going to do is uh, just do this from scratch real quick. Do show joints again. <clears throat> so now I'm going to parent this guy underneath our bone that rotates. So we can put it right here. And we'll hit P. So when we make a controller, keep my finger on the V key for a second. There we go. I'll make that control a little bigger. So when we make this controller that controls the railgun, it can be probably a little bit smaller. I'm just trying to make sure it doesn't intersect with the camera system there. Sensors. Um, let's go to modify freeze transforms. We're going to do parent constraint, which will grab the parent first, then the child. And we go to constraint, parent constraint, making sure maintain offset is on to calculate three two objects in 3D space. So now when I grab this guy, you'll see we have a rotating, look at that, railgun. So it rotates and moves around. But we're not done yet because we need it to slide back and forth. So that part can be connected to this guy, or we can actually have it underneath this guy. So when it moves, the whole thing moves together. Now you'll notice nothing seems to be going together right now because we don't have this guy underneath anything. So we're going to make another controller. The nice thing about parent constraint, I can control D, duplicate that last one, hit the W key and bring it down. This could be our slide controller. And I'm going to uh, make him look a little bit more slide-like by hitting the R key. Thinning this out here. And we're just going to freeze the transforms. And we're going to parent, con or just, uh, yeah, we'll do parent constraint. Grab this guy here, grab this guy here. And this is absent of it being directly connected to the body, which is fine for now because it's a simple parent 
after the fact. You're just going to make sure your controllers are underneath the appropriate hierarchy down the pipe, all the way down the chain. Otherwise, one thing will move and the other thing won't. And you guys all have experienced that at one time. Yep, I know because you've sent me emails freaking out. So we grab this here, constraint, we do parent constraint. And we're going to give this guy in hard parent, like a regular FK spine. Here we go. And then we're going to grab this piece of geo here. There we go. Oh, my bad. And we're going to parent him underneath a slide control. So now, check it. We can do slide back and forth. And then we grab this guy here and we do a little unvotation. I have not painted in all my vates, but you will see it is quite efficient for death. Pretty cool. Look at that. Pretty sweet. All right, so that's a rail gun. Let me go back a little bit. Put these guys back in resting position. My demos are cool because I get to get stuff done while I'm showing you how to do it. It's pretty awesome. Let's move on to the arm real quick. This won't take too long. Now, you can leave the arm uh, in its neutral position where it's just down below. I know that John Podpletsky and me had actually got it to work. Um, but I'm going to show you. You can also bend it. So there's nothing against bending the arm. It's okay. Your parents won't know. So let's go and grab this here. I have no idea what that means. Grab this over here. Let's grab all the pieces. He's got a lot of accessories. I try to make it somewhat believable, even though there is a little bit of pipe shoving involved. Um, happy compromise. It works good as long as my texture is complementary. Um, I'm going to group that real quick. Group. I'm going to change his pivot point or rotation point. So um, I'm going to do modify center pivot so we can find it. And I'm going to hit the insert key. Keep my finger on the V key and I'm going to snap that right at the joint axis point. I'm going to to the other one. You traitor. Let's go move him real quick here. Got to find that blue line of destiny. Let's go over here. Sorry, it's late. I get goofy. All right, so you go over here and move that in the centre. There we go. Awesome sauce. That's actually almost completely perfect. So you'll see when we rotate, we get a nice perfect angle on that. And what you want to do when you make your arm, it's intersecting a little bit in the leg, well, almost is. Um, you want to make sure your bone is set to the same position when you do this. Now, you don't have to have RP solver. You can have a um, single chain. You don't have to have rope RP, you can have SC when it comes to the IK. And if you know anything about IK, you know exactly what I'd be talking about. All right, I'm trying to keep it rigging real, you know what I'm saying? All right, go over here. Ah, joint tool. So let's go ahead and make our joints in the right spot. That's my initial joint for the shoulder. We do have to make sure he's in the right spot. He's kind of key. Let's go to display. Um, animation joint size real quick so that's really small helps to move the menu away from that area let's go and hit the W key real quick and move him into place <clears throat> again we really want this guy to be in the right spot for the shoulder front view actually that's pretty bang on right on so now let's go and uh, finish the rest of the arm now, Maya should recognize that you are uh, building an arm. Sometimes it will be stubborn. I'm going to click right here on the shoulder. You'll have to uh, click the joint a couple times is what I'm getting at. And then we'll go one more at the end for the arm right there. Okay. So we got the arm bent. We got that in place. And I already showed you another video how to do the shoulders. All you need to do is connect these guys together. Just make sure you watch that one. Don't want to do the whole thing all at once so you'll puke out of boredom. Let's go and I think it's possible. Let's go to IK handle tool, double click, SC solver. I'm going to click on the shoulder, and then now I'm going to click on the arm right there. Now, with that set up, I now need to parent things appropriately. This is the tricky part, but not impossible at all. I'm going to go and grab these pieces. And I'm going to shift select the um, elbow 
I'm going to hit P. This guy up top, I'm going to shift select this guy and hit P. So, uh, and then the final part, which is this guy. This guy, this one on this side does not have bolts. The other one does have bolts. Grab this. Grab the gun. Guns. And uh, it's plural for guns. Joking. And again, hit P. Boom. There you go. Try to keep it entertaining as we go through stuff in life that may not be. Grab this here. Now we move it. You'll see we get woo, little robot action. <laughs> you can shoot, and that's the noise he makes. So he can have I K or F K. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you guys do do um, F K, make sure you put controllers in here. The legs are mainly going to be the I K ones. But he's not really pushing off anything on the arm, so you can make these FK, and if you do, use the FK connect and put them in the right spot. So let's talk real quick about the fractal node, how this works. So machine guns require wiggle. So what we're going to do is open up our hyper shade. We're able to use it as much this quarter just because of the size of the class and all you guys have a bazillion questions. Stalkers. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go in here and create a fractal node that we can drag into this particular system. So let's go into our uh, create. We're going to go to our uh, general utilities. And actually, we can get it from here or simply just go into our textures because we're going to actually, I can really run a math node in this case. We're just going to use a fractal node, which we can find. Let me see where he's at. And the cool thing about the fractal node, they're made to animate. They actually are animatable. You see where it's solid fractal? We could use a solid fractal, but I'm not going to use a solid fractal. Let's use a generic fractal. And let me see here. I'm having some problems seeing it. So let's open this up a little bit. And isolate 2D textures. Where are we, dude? Here we go. Plain old fractal. Get him active right there. And that fractal, we're going to drag into one of these items here. So we're going to pick on this guy. He's already parented, so we know where he's at. So I'm going to grab him, go to his uh, attributes real quick. There you go. And we can do it through the translate, through the rotate, uh, even through scale. But in this case, we really want this fractal node to be connected to the translate. Now, ahead of time, we can even lock one of these down so it only affects certain movements. Now if it takes off, you this one go, oh, I don't like you. Let's do undo connect. We can go in here and remove his group, which does become a problem sometimes. So let's go to our outliner. Outliner. And let's find him. Mech arm. That's not him. And we can hit shift P if you want to open up all those. So let's find this guy here. There we go. Left arm. Now, we want to go in here and get this guy to move. Now, we saw him take off. So what you can do to maybe alleviate that, we go edit, modify. Let's go in here and freeze transforms on him. And that makes it so it's zeroed out. And sometimes a fractal node will require that because it's you're putting in a new input. And it can be a little bit fussy. Let's go and drag our fractal node in there now. There we go. Shifted just a little bit. We can put him back. And let's actually change his movement control to object. Makes things a little bit easier. Now you'll notice that when you move it, you no longer have control. That's the only bad thing about this guy. So what we can do with this node input connection um, <clears throat> if you want, you can SDK set this up so the fractal only um, turns on whenever you have like a controller that allows it to turn on. So if we look at this guy, if I grab this guy and I grab my fractal node, we're going to grab input output connections. We'll see that it's connected directly into the movement of our object. Now trying to uh, get him in the right spot, he's got he's shifted a little bit. What we can do is do this. We can grab him and edit 
create a group. Let's see if we can do modify center pivot. May still prevent us from moving it. Let's see if we can move. There we go. So we made a group. No, I love group. Groups are so great. So if you can't move it, just create a group and just put it back in its right position. Right now, he doesn't have any kind of motion on him right now. But if we go to the object itself, let's mess with the attributes here. And let's go to the fractal. There we go. And we can turn on animate. So over time, he can animate and you know wiggle and stuff. Now you can draw how strong it's going to be. Notice it's very strong and running to the wall. So we can turn down the amplitude a little bit. So now when it animates, it's a little bit less. We can turn down the thresh, um, turn up the threshold, turn down the ratio. And what it is, it's using 2D information, black and white information, which is used for noise, which you use in a, uh, in a 2D situation, and relating it to a 3D object. So when you scroll this over, you'll see now it's a lot more realistic. Da, 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 da. That makes that machine good noise if you're wondering. Um, with that group in tow, though, we have to also make sure, remember, we just grouped him. We have to make sure that group is underneath that bone. So let's go to that group. And it looks like we are. Let's double check. Bam, there it is. Cool. And we still have our control of our rig moving around. And then we also have a fractal in here. Let's actually go back to uh, world control. So we can move our gun up. And if we had a controller right here, we could go directly into how strong that um, sh um, wiggling is going to be by doing SDK. So in other words, I can directly link, you know, wherever my controller goes, we can have the SDK, you know, increase the amplitude the bias ratio, any of these. You can have a, a really robust control system just floating in space, allow you to turn it on and off, which is kind of cool. So now we still have our machine gun. All right, that's it. I'm done. Um, you guys have a good night.